that he works past human ability and the brain's power to remember, you know, can be faded, but he can in, log in there and he can make you remember even if your brain is not capable to remember. That's amazing to me. But um, yeah, he can override, you know, the mind. He can override your physical ability to remember. If you just tap into him and if you just stay connected to him, he can give you uh, some memory of something that is so appropriate in some, you know, season and time that you are that you need so much. And that's why we need him so much is to do these things that, you know, are impossible. But the Holy Spirit encounter is, is what we're talking about today. And um, today is different. As I said just now, Holy Spirit wants to talk to each person personally. And you must uh, be ready today to receive from God, you know, what is in his heart. Because, you know, as I was searching the scriptures and as I was going through all this to prepare for, for today, Holy Spirit interrupted me and he said, no, I want to speak to them personally. I want you to type down what I want to say and I want you to, to go through these things with them and I will lead you and I will speak to them myself. But I'm going to just start off with a few scriptures here. It says Psalms 45, 7, it says your, uh, you love righteousness, uprightness and right standing with God and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. He has anointed me with the glad, the oil of gladness, the oil of joy. The joy that you get from the Holy Spirit is supernatural joy. It is not based on this world, circumstances and things around you. It is above all these things. And it's not based, like I always say, it's not a joke. It's not like you laugh because of a joke. It's the joy of the Lord, which is a fountain, which is bubbling inside a person, is able to make you happy while everything around you is dark and everything around you is miserable. The joy of the Lord can lift you up and it is your strength, says the Bible. It is your strength. It is your power. And the enemy is after your joy, after your mind. If you can get hold of your joy, you can take your power. But this joy of the Lord comes with the Holy Spirit. And you have to get the Holy Spirit to get the joy of the Lord. Right? So stay in the presence of God. He, he produces the joy of the Lord. See, I can't just go decide I want to get the joy of the Lord. You get the Holy Spirit, you get the joy of the Lord. That's included in the presence of God. The Word will work for you when you rejoice over it. Right? You see the scripture from the church group, I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. So it works like this, that if you rejoice because of the word and when you rejoice by receiving, when you, uh, how you receive, it makes all the difference. You are happy to receive what he says, then the word will work for you. If you are happy to receive, how you receive the Holy Spirit will change the whole outcome. So change your heart today and say, I'm happy for the Holy Spirit that God has sent to this earth to help me and to stand by me, to intercede for me, to teach me. I'm happy that He's here with us. Like, I'm excited to meet with Him. I'm happy that He's in me, He lives in me. I'm the temple and I am His temple and... I'm happy and I rejoice as if somebody, you know, I rejoice as if I found something, you know, as if somebody gave me a big treasure. I discovered a big treasure when I discovered the Word. I discovered a big treasure when I discovered the Holy Spirit. Like, it's a treasure to me. I rejoice when I found it. I rejoice when I find it. And so this must be your, your, your idea of, you know, how you receive God, receive His promises with joy, right? And then it changes everything. The outcome will change. So you've got to be like that. Cheer up, says Jesus, right? Cheer up. The kingdom culture. Here's the kingdom culture. Romans 14, 17. After all, the kingdom of God is not a matter of getting 
the food and drink and, and one likes. But instead it is righteousness, the state of which makes a person acceptable to God, and heart peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Spirit. This is the kingdom culture. It is not about the outside, it's not about the physical. I've seen you know, people worship, but they're so connected to the physical, they're so connected about you know, what's going on outside here, yeah, that they are not connected to the kingdom culture, which is more about, am I right with God? You know, do I have peace in my heart? And do I have the joy of the Lord? Like, I'm focused to get in a place where I'm living in the joy of the Lord, and I have peace in my heart because prosperity will follow from, I will prosper as my soul prospers. So it will come from that place where my confidence is in God, where my joy is in the Lord, where I have peace with God. I'm in peace with God. And that is the kingdom culture, not by getting stuff. You know, my heart, my mind must be set to get these things first and then these other things will follow. Seek the kingdom of God first, right? And all these other things will follow. And John 14, 26, But the Comforter, Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. Will, he will teach you all things, and He will cause you to recall. He will remind you of, bring into remembrance everything I have told you. See, this is what is here to do, to remind me of the promises, which is my, 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 my covenant, which is my inheritance, your inheritance. He reminds me of my inheritance. He reminds me of the promises, the covenant that I have. And He's here to do this all the time. He's here to talk to me. He's here to lead me. He's here to help me. And He's going to explain Himself a little bit better now, now when we start to go into His you know, uh, heart and discover his heart, right? So he is the counselor, the advocate, and the comforter, and the intercessor. That's what he does. He's, 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 he's bringing that, you know, he's, he's playing that role of a lawyer standing before God and advocating for me. He's standing up for me interceding for me, praying for me, and he's doing these things even while I sleep. And when I come to him, he goes speak to the Father about me. And so the, the world needs to know and believe how to receive Jesus. But the church needs to know and, and, and uh, how to receive the Holy Spirit. See, you receive him with joy, with gladness. You receive the Holy Spirit as a gift from God. You receive the Holy Spirit, give Him the place in your life by making a choice. This, you know, He's ever present. He's always there. You've got a genius that lives in you that knows everything. And so, for me, I, I'm sure the Holy Spirit is wondering why people don't know Him more like they do. That, you know, they don't know me so, as much as they should. They don't know me in the things they decide as much as they should because I have all the answers. I can do anything. I know everything. And I am a genius. And if you, if you spend time with me, I can even make you look smart. Right? I can make you look smart because I have all the answers. That's how he is. That's how, what it is. He knows everything. And so... There's a, there's a way to live with the Holy Spirit and under His leadership, and that must be, must be sorted out. So the, the world needs to know how to get Jesus, but the church needs to know how to get the Holy Spirit. As you recognize and receive counsel from the Holy Spirit, with joy yielding to His leadership, you will find yourself under His influence. There's many, many, many of these things that are so awesome that God... You know, the Holy Spirit, God the Spirit, has the ability to influence my emotions. He can lift my heart up. He can change my chemistry. He can change my mood. And I'm telling you the truth. 
you know, if I wake up in the morning, I'm not okay, I just pray in tongues. Just a few minutes, my spirit is up. Just a few minutes, my mind is different now. I feel a lift already in the spirit. So don't grab your phone first thing in the morning, right? Don't reach for, you know, your internet and your email. Reach for the Holy Spirit first. Good morning, Holy Spirit. You know, try this, you know. It's recognize Him. Recognize Him. You know, it's all about recognizing and, and putting Him in that place and crowning Him, you know, all the time. Put him in, putting Him in a, in a place that He belongs in your heart, in your life. That is what it is. And as you do this and as you know Him, then all sorts of other things will follow. You will start to know stuff that you're supposed to know. You will start to get revelation of things that you didn't understand before. You see, people go by what they know and they stop by what they know. But the Holy Spirit will never stop increasing you and teaching you new things. So as you recognize and receive counsel from the Holy Spirit, with, your, with you yielding to His leadership, you will find yourself under His influence with Him thinking through your mind. The Holy Spirit is a genius and if you listen to Him, He will make you look smart. Holy Spirit knows your deepest thoughts and desires, wants only the best for you, loves you, thinks you to die for. When you come into His presence, you will receive fullness of joy. Yes, supernatural joy, not based on your circumstances, your situations. He has all the wisdom and direction you need. Let Him take over control and navigate you, Proverbs 3, in all your ways, recognize, acknowledge Him, and He will direct. See that director, I think about the movie director, I think about somebody that's going to make the movie play that was written about me before I was even here. I see a screenplay, I see a book that was written, and the Holy Spirit is the director of this movie. And I know that this movie was already seen before it was seen. And that gives me comfort to understand that where I am now today, God knows. He knows exactly where I am, where I must go. And as I yield to Him more, I will see more of this story come through. But if I don't want to play you know, and listen and follow Him, I don't know if that story is really the true story that He wants to see in my life. You see, so the more I yield to Him, the more this God plan will come. The more your plan takes over, the more God plan takes a back seat. And that's, 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 that's what it is. You know, it's exciting. Like, know Him in all your ways, recognize, acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight your, your plane and plane your paths. And so we can choose to do the following. The way you receive the Holy Spirit is how, how you receive Him. You can choose with gladness. You come with joy in the house of the Lord, right? Um, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved, right? We receive Him. We can grieve Him, right? We can... Uh, make room for Him, we can recognize Him, we can heal to Him, there's things we can do, we can respond to Him, we can recognize Him, under his, we can come under His influence. So if you start to pray like this, you know, I've been meditating on being synchronized with Holy Spirit and His eternal plan. So like, if you can pinpoint the second where you live now, and you can see that that is the will of God and exact point that you must be according to Him. You know, if I can get myself to be in the synchronization of the Holy Spirit, then I know that I will not miss anything. And, and if you can meditate on that and start to pray for that to happen, then God will move you, position you in places where you did not expect, but afterwards you will see that, wow, as I walked in here now, this and this happened. And God will start to open your eyes and you start to see what I was planning to do this, but now look at this now. Because I meditated on, you know, on being in sync with His Spirit. Like, 
your watch, my watch, same second, ticking the time, you know, my timing, his timing, my timing, right? And that's very important for me because timing, they say, is everything, right? You have to be in the right time, in God's time. He has the power to influence my emotions. He will take the victim out of your voice. He will change the way that you speak. He will change your words, but he will also change your whole flavor. He will change how you respond, uh, your faith, faith in your voice, expectation in your voice will change because of his influence in you. See, he has the power to influence. He has the power of influence. Amen? Awesome. So spend time with him, he's influence you, right? You'll not be the same after you spend time with him. He will change your emotions. He will change how you speak. He will change the tone of your voice and he will take the victim out of your voice and the complaining, okay? A lot of Christians still complain too much. They look at what's happening and they talk and they repeat what they see. Don't go for that. Let the Holy Spirit change your faith and change and lift your faith up and increase your faith. He is the, you know, the one who started your faith and he is the one that will finish your faith. Right? And so interaction. He wants to interact this morning. He said to me, look, I know you can read all these scriptures and talk for us. But this morning I want to interact with my people, myself. And so what God told me to say to you, that you know, if you're listening online, listen to this when you are quiet, when, when things are settled down. If you have babies to attend to, attend to them. If you have a baby and you're sitting in the church and the baby is, is taking too much of your attention, the baby is at peace, no problem. But if the baby is you know, taking too much of your attention, take the baby outside because we want quiet in here now. We want to connect with God. We want to settle down and really incline our ears and our spirit to Him. And we want to be connected with God. So you're going to open yourself up for Holy Spirit. And you're going to, you're going to like let Him come and, and do settings inside of you. Let Him come and speak to you directly. As if you are the only one standing before Him today. I believe that he wants to do that and he also wants you to exercise your hearing. He wants you to exercise the, the, the eyes of your heart and the eyes of your or the ears of your heart, your spiritual senses, so that you will be more connected with him. The you know, Holy Spirit will tell you things that you would not know in a second and a moment, in a flash. Holy Spirit can tell you stuff. If you exercise your hearing, you will know things that are, that are going to still happen before they happen. You know, he will just start to talk to you and you will just know stuff. Yesterday I drove behind the car and I, you know, because I'm always looking who's the fastest, you know, <laughs> at the robot. Like, I don't want to sit and then, you know, you have a driving school in front of you. Right. Amen. So I'm looking and seeing and then I'm deciding which lane I'm going to take, double lane. And I saw that this one looks a bit slow. Holy Spirit said to me, no, you can go here. He's going to turn right at the robot. I'm like, okay. But you see, this is what I want to teach you. As with that word also comes peace. With that influence and that word that he speaks to me, I just knew. I just knew car is going to turn at the robot. And it's just, it's not important, right? It's not important. It's not really, but it's important to me because otherwise when I'm stuck at the robot, okay? But it's not really that important that I would pull away at the robot fast. Um, but Holy Spirit wants to teach us, use our circumstance, our life, and He wants to speak to you and give you information that you did not even count on. You know, and this can go into your business, into your relationships, everywhere. He can talk to you. And you need a personal relationship with Him, an intimate relationship with Him. Because I tell you, when I'm down, I speak to the Holy Spirit. 
and, and it's like I left the thing with him. Like I see that I, you know, after I spoke to him, I feel better because he took it from me. Make sense? So if you can get into that place where this happens to you, you are going to find that this is very, very beneficial to you, to have an intimate relationship with Holy Spirit. Because he's going to talk to you, you know, many times I tell him, he says, I know how you feel. I understand completely how rejection works. I understand what you experience and what you see. I saw everything you saw. It's like he knows everything, everything about you. He knows what you think. He knows your motives. He knows why you think what you think. He knows your limitations. He knows everything. And so when I think like this, he knows why I think like this. And then he can answer me according to my personality, according to my character, according to my perception. He can answer me according to, and that's why it's so important to listen and be in tune with the Spirit of God. <clears throat> Walking in the Spirit, of course, will set you free from the lust of the flesh. If you walk in the Spirit, you are not even in that mindset. It's completely away. So listen to the Holy Spirit. He wants to speak to you personally today. Every person uh, must have their full attention. Um, and allow God, to, to, uh, the Spirit, allow, allow God the Spirit to minister to you and speak to you today. Right. So... He says, okay, close your eyes, listen to this. Holy Spirit said this to me, I am here, I am here to glorify. I, the Spirit shall glorify me, John 16, 14. The Spirit shall glorify me, says Jesus. Just as Jesus has come to reveal and so glorify the Father, the Holy Spirit has come to reveal and to glorify the Son. He shall testify of me and he shall glorify me. This is what Jesus wrote. He says he came to glorify the Son as the Son came to glorify the Father. So the Spirit has come to glorify. And the glory of the Lord is a manifestation of his presence, a manifestation of his goodness and his heart. And so the glory of the Lord is here by manifestation of the Holy Spirit. He says, he will think through your mind. He says, I will think through your mind. I will speak through your lips. I can change your mind and transform you. I can transform your mind. I can renew, revive and uplift you. I can direct you. I can control your life with permission, only with permission. But if I go before you, it is best for you. If I take the wheel, if I take the leadership, this is the best thing for you. It's not good for you that you sit in the control seat. That you must know. And it says, me, I, Holy Spirit, the Father, and Jesus, the Word of God, are one. When you hear me speak uh, today of me, I speak of us together. We stand for the same truth. We are completely one. And we are in complete agreement. Me, the Father, and Jesus, the Word of God. I represent us here on earth. And I am here to bring glory, and I speak not of myself, but whatever I hear from the Father, I speak. John 16, 13. The Word and I are spirit and life. Together we move together and influence together people. I see inside and I discern the heart, the spirit, the one that knows the heart of the Father only. I do, for I am His own Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 11. 
No one knows the heart of the Father, but the Spirit of the Father. I am the Spirit of the Father. I know the heart of the Father. I know the mind of Christ. I have the power to draw people. I have the power to draw people. I have the power to strengthen people. I have the power to build and to make people see. I have the power to make people stand and I have the power to make people fall. I can overpower any emotion and any senses. I have influencing power. I know everything and I can do anything and change feelings. I am the spirit of love, power and sound mind. I am the spirit that gives a person self-discipline. I am the spirit that gives a person self-control. I am the one who brings soundness in a mind and I can bring peace that you cannot get from a bank account, that you cannot get from this world. Only I can bring a peace that surpasses all understanding, says the Lord. The Spirit, He is the Lord. And so I am here, I am sent by the Father to lead you, to counsel you, um, yeah, to counsel the totally dependent seeking me with faith. I am here to counsel the totally dependent seeking me with faith. I am the counselor of all the counselors. I have full knowledge of all your thoughts. I can fully discern all your intentions and your motives. If you ask me, I will reveal them to you. It's good for you to know why you do what you do. Ask me and I will reveal it to you, says the Lord. I know all your problems and your challenges. I know all your weakness. I know your battles. I know all your gifts and your talents, your ability, what you can and what you cannot do. I know how far you can go. I know what makes you happy. I know your heart's desires. And I know many of your desires are not from me. But I know all your desires. I am here and I will never leave you. I love you. I celebrate your, uh, your complete uniqueness and I am very proud of you. You are my masterpiece in progress. There is no one person like you and you are and your very character and spirit is totally different than others. While you delight yourself in me, I also delight myself in you. As you honor me, I also honor you. I am after healing your motives and desires of your heart. I do not cooperate with wrong thinking because there is no wrong thinking in me. I do not cooperate with wrong thinking because inside of me, there is no wrong thinking. I do not use evil to teach you. I am your teacher. I will not assist a person to do wrong things. If you ask me and are close enough, you will hear my voice. The more you lay down your life in submission, the better you will hear my voice. You have to believe I have I have only good plans for you and they are eternal and they might not look good to you always says the Lord but the way that I get you to be transformed is my business I have an end goal in mind and I know exactly how to get you there says the Lord many things you do not understand now because of your perceptions that are still in the process of transformation. Some of you are very slow to seek me, says the Lord. Remember, I am God, the Spirit, and I do not do backseat driving. I am not a spare wheel. 
I do not sit in the back. I don't stay in a, in a, in a, a spare wheel place. I sit in the driver's seat. I am God. The safest place for you to live is in complete dependence on me. I am able to navigate your life according to my predestined plan. All I need is complete surrender to my leadership. I do not condemn, I save and deliver. My people, I convict. My people uh, from traps and temptations. I deliver my people from traps and temptations. I can keep you from temptations. I can keep you from the traps of the enemy. The word and I will discipline and teach you in love. I'm here to glorify the Father and Jesus Christ. I'm the living manifestation of the glory of God in the earth. You being one with us is my happy place, says the Lord. You being one with us is our happy place. I am here to teach you and reveal Jesus and transform you into his image for the world to see. I do not want you to do things by your own strength without us. As the word says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I do not expect you to lead. I want to lead. You must follow. I don't expect you to go before me. You must yield to my spirit. You must give me right of way. Then I will go before you. I have many gifts and hidden things that are not hidden from you, but for you. If you desire them, you can have them. I am after producing the predestined vision of you and version of you. <clears throat> you will access them by faith and with the right heart, motives and desires. You will receive them. If you want to receive and access my flow, you have to line your thinking up with my thinking. Make room for me in the upper room of your heart and I will sit in the ruler seat of your heart like the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings 4 that made room for my servant Elijah her and her husband made a room for him when he passes through he can be in the upper room God says I'm looking for the upper room in your life not the lower room but the upper room the most important room the room that is in, on top of your heart. That is where I want to sit and that's where I need to be. Make room for the Holy Spirit. Make room for me in your life. That means take time to honor me and take time to accept me and receive me. Don't let me not fit in. Don't let me try and squeeze my way into your life open your heart wide and let me come in and let me help you listen to the writings of my servant Paul the words we gave him to write second Timothy 3 16 every scripture is God breathed given by his inspiration and profitable for instruction for reproof for conviction of sin for correction of error and discipline in obedience and for training in righteousness in holy living and conformity to God's will in thought purpose and action every scripture is God breathed every scripture is inspired by me the Spirit of God and it is not from man it is from me says the Lord I have inspired them it says Ephesians 4 13 to 31 and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offend or vex or sadden Him by whom you were sealed, marked, branded as God's own, secured for the day of redemption, of final deliverance through Christ from evil and consequences of sin. 
Let all bitterness and indignation and wrath, passion, rage, bad temper and resentment, anger, animosity and quarreling, brawling, clamor, contention and slander, evil speaking, abusive, blasphemous language be banished from you with all malice, spite, ill will and baseness of every kind. Says I, the Lord, do not like to live in a house that is full of strife. I do not live in a house that's full of strife. Get all the strife out of your house. And, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. God says the grieving. The grieving happens when I tell you to do something and you don't listen to me. When I want you to go this way and you choose to go another way. It's when I want to protect you and when I've got so much plans for you, good plans, but you interfere and you go your way and you leave my plan. You don't go by my spirit. It says, listen, I've got good plans. They might not look good in the moment, but they are eternally good for you. Do not grieve me. Do not grieve me. God says, Holy Spirit says that that I want to see you win. I don't want to see you lose. I hate it when you are hurt. I hate it when you are sad. I hate it when you are broken. I want to see you lifted. I want to see you inspired. I want to see you walking in faith. I want to see you living expectant life and not live in a down state and live in a darkness and hopeless state. That's what I want for you. And trust me when I speak to you that I'm the one who can produce these things in your life. Trust me that I am the one, the only one, that can make these things happen. So listen to me. Listen to me. Be careful for idols, things that want to take my place, that special place in your heart. Be careful for these things because I am a jealous God. I want your your attention, your undivided attention. So run things by me as often as you can. Know me in everything you do. I will help you. I will lead you. I am not controlling because love does not seek its own way. But I will have a good plan for you and I am able to perform it. Do not close your heart your conscience to me, I'm here to help you. I am the only true hope and help you will ever have. Allow me to heal your heart. Take away your, uh, every pathway habit that leads to bad choices. I'm healing your heart as I speak now. I can heal your heart. I can, he I can heal uh, repeated things that happen, like habits that must be broken. I can heal them. I will heal them if you spend time with me. Trust me, I know how. It breaks my heart to see you getting hurt. I understand how you feel. I'm your intercessor. Give your hurts to me. I relate with every one of them. When you speak to me about your problems, also see them as that you leave them with me. I'm very aware of your thinking and self-talk. So many of you are getting tormented in your mind. Seek help from my people. Let them pray with you and they will help you to get closer to me. That's, that's what he said. Ask me to make you more sensitive for me. Ask me to make you more sensitive for me. Ask me to open the eyes of your heart and your, the ears of your heart. To heal your discernment and perception, ask me to heal your imagination and your understanding. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Walk, stay in me and you will not fall for the lust of this flesh. Galatians 5. 1 Corinthians 2, 11, it says, For the person, for what a person perceives, knows and understands, what passes through a man's thoughts except 
the man's own spirit within him. Who knows? Except the man's spirit within him. Just so, no one discerns, comes to know and com comprehend the thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. It says Proverbs 20, 27, The Spirit of a man is the lamp unto the Lord. It shows all the inside parts of his heart. Your spirit is like a lamp unto the Lord. Like it shines on your thoughts and your heart. And it shows and reveals all of them as if they are in the light. You must know this. And you must be comfortable with that. And you must ask that He will put the lights on inside your heart. That He will come and search your heart. If there's anything, Lord, between us, is there anything that's standing between us? Is there any idolatry in me? Any wickedness? I pray that you will reveal to me anything. I want to be completely right because I'm hungry to be right with you. That's what I live for. That's my appetite. And I want to know and I want to be completely in right standing with God. That's where I am. Lord says, stay there. The words that I speak to you are from the heart of the Father. We would like for you to line up with them. For you to come in complete agreement with us. So that our words become your words. As Jeremiah said, your words, my words. That your words will become my words. And that you would become a voice for us in this earth. To voice our will and our way to this world that you live in, to this realm that you're living in, to this natural, to this earth that you stay in, that you would voice for us what we say is our plan. I am, he says, I am the one that can keep a person from temptation. Yeah. I am the one who the whole heavenly host submit to. I can give them orders to do anything. I am that one. I see hearts, I see desires, I change minds, I can bring vision, I can edify, I can direct your story if you allow me. I will play out the book through your life. I have all the gifts from God. I am the gift for, of God. I have the ability to empower you. The word that you know as dunamos, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness. And when you speak my words and make them your words, the power that's on the words have the power to change and the power to influence and the power to save a person that listens to them. That is the power that I've given you. I am the gift from God. God's way of overriding the tongue. I am God's way of overriding your tongue which you have so much problems with. That's why I've gave you the gift of speaking in tongues. If you haven't got that gift yet, again, desire the gifts and, they, and you will receive them. If you keep on knocking, it will be opened for you. God says, speaking in tongues is, is me overriding your tongue. And then making this the prophecy of your life. And then the whole mind is, is not active. Because I can override your tongue. Yeah, I can, I warn, I foretell. I'm ever present. I never sleep. Now, never out of fashion. Always synchronized with the heart of the Father. Always in tune with the heart of the Father. I only tell you what I hear from Him. We are one. When I say so, he says so. I am an all-knowing genius. 
I know everything. I don't push myself on a person. I have the soft voice. The one that people have to stay quiet and listen to. The one that you have to settle down to hear. I am not in a rat race. I'm not taking part of anxiety. I'm not in that. I am in the peace place. That's where I speak. Settle down, bow before me, worship me, come into your that state and I will speak to you of worship. Right? Never out of fashion. Can't tell me that I've expired. Can't tell me that change things changed. Holy Spirit is not the same anymore. I'm ever the same. Yesterday, today and forever the same. I do not push myself on a person. The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. Psalms 145. I am a jealous God. I do not share my place. I do not share the place where I am supposed to sit. That's why when you choose to serve me, you might even find that things are going wrong sometimes. Because I'm not going to sit where other things sit in your life. Remember this. Where a person's treasure is, there their heart will also be. Put your eyes on me. Think about the things of the Spirit. Think about the things of above. The will of God. The plan of God. Meditate on my word day and night. I can harden hearts. I can be rejected by a person. I can promote the fear of the Lord. I can increase the fear of the Lord in your life. I can increase your appetite. I can increase your will to do. I have the power not only to make you want to do something, but I have the power to make you able to do something. If I take my spirit away from you, you will fall to the floor, become dust. I am the only reason why you live and why you have opportunities. I am the life giver. I am the breath of God. <clears throat> and I know everything. And you need to know this. You need to know how important it is. And, and, and I can increase this knowledge of yours. Increase. Yeah, without me, there's separation. I am your intercessor. I am the one who stands in the gap for you. I am the one who fights for you. While you're even sleeping, I'm building your house. While you are sleeping i'm defending your house it is not you that build your house it is i that build your house it is not by your might and your power that you will inquire or get anything it is by my spirit says the lord and your dependence on me is crucial get the revelation that you are 100 not 99 percent 100% dependent on me. If you stay in that place, it is a safe place. If you stay in that place, the peace of God will follow. If you try and do this yourself, you will lose the peace. If you take your eyes off of Jesus, the Word of God, you will fall. You will stumble. Because I chose you, because I'm, I know your name, because I selected you, you are called for other things than the world. Don't look at what the world gets and how prosperous the world becomes and how successful the world is. 
don't look at those things. Don't look at those things. I have an eternal plan for you. And I have a plan to bless you. I have a plan to bless you. And I am in the increase business. And I want to take you higher from faith to faith and glory to glory. But it's going to come by my will and my way. Not by your timing. My time is not your time. My will and my word is higher than your words and your ways. And I know more than what you know. I have the power to defend you, to avenge you. I have the power to keep your enemies away from your house. They will come in one direction, but they will fall and in fear before your gate and they will turn around and run away from your house seven, in seven ways. Because I have the power. I made everyone. I put everyone together. I gave them abilities, I gave, I gave them uh, talents, I gave them money, I gave them a job, I gave them everything. And I have the power to turn their hearts, to draw them to you if I want to. I can connect them with you if I want to. I can connect anything. But if you have faith in me, I will connect you with only the ones that I want you to be connected with. If you have faith in me, you're going to change from getting to another level. You're going to experience my eternal plan. And you're going to be so glad that you didn't get your way most of the time. Because you're going to find out that I know better. My time is perfect. And if you submit to me, you are safe. And so don't let anxiety and fear and things come and bully you. The devil is the bully of all the bullies, the father of the bullies. Don't let him come and speak to you. Don't listen to every spirit. Listen to my spirit. Learn to discern my voice. Learn to know that when I speak to you, I speak with power and authority and I speak uh, only good and, and plans for you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this year, this morning. My brother, my sister, everyone here, everyone listening online. I pray for them, God, for all of us. I pray for us, all of us, that we will be strengthened by your Spirit, uplifted by your Spirit, inspired by your Spirit, encouraged by your Spirit that we will be able to run our race and finish our race. All we want to know is this one word that says, well done, good and faithful servant. It's what I want to hear ring in my ears every day. My God is proud of me and He's looking at me and He knows my best. He knows my conscience. My conscience together with Holy Spirit come in agreement and they say the same thing. That's what I want. That even if people accuse me of things, the Holy Spirit can say to me whether it's true or not. And I can have peace with God while people maybe sometimes hate me and don't think that it's, that it's not going to happen. The Word says they will hate you because of me. The world will hate you because of me, says Jesus. Why? Because you're doing things different? Because you don't say yes all the time? Because you choose to listen to God and not people? And you're doing what God says and not what people want? Then they hate you. But you must know that God is the one to listen to. God is the one you should follow. God is the one you must put in the ruler's seat of your life. He has the best plan for you. I pray for you that Holy Spirit will fill you up, that you will stay in above three quarters all the time, full. That you would see your gauge not going under half, that you would stay full, filled with the Spirit. And that God's power will work through you, that He will speak through your lips, that He will use your vocal cords and think through your mind, 
that he would change your emotions and change your heart and change your expectancy, change your faith to another level and that he would hold you and give you peace that surpasses all understanding, that you will find your hope, your only, only place for hope in him, your only help in him, and that your eyes will be fixed on Jesus, the word of God, and that he would help you to, to run your race and to finish your race. I pray for you today. I pray for me today. I pray the same thing for me, that you would just take over God completely. And I surrender everything to you. I'm just a steward in your kingdom of the things you've given me to steward. I'm just a boy and you are the father. I don't know the end of the story, but I know the ending is good. For your plans are good for me. As you speak these things, as you declare them, as you believe them, God says they will come true for you. Because you will have what you say. Touch my lips with coal and fire, Lord. Anoint my lips, is what I pray for everyone here. So that when we speak, influencing power of Holy Spirit will come on my lips and then make changes happen in the Spirit regarding my business, regarding my marriage, regarding my future, regarding everything that I touch and everywhere I go into. That's what I pray. I pray, Father, increase the power in my heart. You say that power will come when we receive the Holy Spirit and we will be witnesses of you wherever we go. Let it be so. I pray my brother and my sister be filled. Yokes be destroyed. The anointing will destroy your yoke and remove your burden today and that you will find yourself walking by the Spirit, living by the Spirit, doing business by the Spirit, being married in the Spirit, everything in the Spirit and walking by the laws of the Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Does say.